there. Welcome to the studio. So tonight we're going to be painting some poppies, some beautiful pink poppies. Here's my inspiration photograph. I got this from PMP Art. If you haven't been to PMP Art, you ought to check it out. Some beautiful photos you can use to do your art with. I'm going to be drawing a group of poppies that look something like this. This will be somewhat of what our final project turns out like. I am going to be using my lightweight Skechers box box by Windsor & Newton. I did a recent review on this. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. I think it turned out pretty nicely. There they are, all my beautiful colors. And one more thing, I am going to be using, well, not all of these, but my paintbrushes from uh, Zen Art. These are beautiful brushes. These are from the Turner Collection. I'll talk more about those as we paint, and I'm going to do a review of those very shortly if you're interested in that. But that's not why we're here tonight. We're painting some poppies. Get ready. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. Here is our inspiration picture. Now, there are, I don't know, one, two, three, four, I don't know, six, seven, I, I don't know. I can't count them all. Uh, poppies in here. The picture I showed to you before had three. What I was trying to do was just simplify this. I mean, we can paint this poppy behind that poppy, behind that one, behind this one, behind that one, and it gets to be a lot. For all practical, pur all practical purposes, all I wanted to do was simplify this. I really wanted to get one poppy behind the other to give a little bit of depth, and then a, a third one to balance the composition out a little bit. And this is what I came up with. All right? So uh, you can even see I've simplified the leaves a little bit. Um, Simplified my drawing, so uh, that's what we're going to go with. We're going to do that tonight. Here's my drawing. It's very similar, almost the same to this one. I'm going to put my inspiration photo right up here in the corner. And again, I'm using my Windsor & Newton uh, Skechers Box 10. And this is going to work out great because while these are pink, uh, da uh, pink daisies, <laughs> pink poppies, I'm going to use a couple of different colors, uh, Windsor Red, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Permanent Rose, and Windsor Violet uh, to make the, the different colors that are going to go into these. And I think you can see it a little bit on here. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit, I think this flower really shows it. I've got one color here a different color here and a different color here to help differentiate all three of those different petals on there. Uh, and so we're going to hope to duplicate some of that tonight. Let me back out just a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put my color swatch up at the top. That'll probably come in and out. You'll see it coming and going. Um, I do need to mention one more thing. I'm using my Zen Art Turner Collection brushes. Uh, they're very nice. It's a mix of squirrel and synthetic hair. And I am going to start, you know what, I'm going to start with a number seven round. If you see me going up here, that's where my water is. I've got a sponge just to get a little excess water off of my paintbrush. God, I can't remember anything. Uh, that I'm doing, and uh, and we're going to go. I'm going to start by putting a light wash of some permanent rose on everything, just to get a little color down. That's going to be kind of our base. Maybe I'll put a little bit of permanent lizard and crimson in there too. And I'm doing this. It's going to dry lighter. We all know watercolors dry at about half of the intensity as the colors they are when they're wet. And so I just want to put this on so that when I leave uh, a little white later on or, or when I come back in and I darken part of it and don't darken another part, that that other part isn't just uh, white, white. So I'm going to put this on and I'm mostly staying in the lines. I'm not completely staying in the lines. Um, if you've seen my videos before, you know I have a great deal of trouble staying in the lines. 
and uh, I, and I try not to let it bother me. So that's why I'm going to handle it tonight too. Just a little bit of water, and I'm going to just block in some color here. I'm not trying to stay inside the inner petals or anything like that. I'm just putting in the color. We'll see how it falls. If I mix a little different color in here, uh, right next to one, I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to hope that that's going to dry up. Well, we're not going to hope it's going to dry up because it is going to dry up. But we're going to let that dry up. And then we're going to paint over top of it. Here we go. So I should mention, this is the, oh, I don't know what this is, the third painting I've done with this Winsor Newton Skechers uh, uh, tin, Skechers box. And uh, when I did my, my first video on it, and I made some color uh, patterns like this, and just pulled them down to see uh, what strength, what relative strength they were, and how far I could pull it out, and whatnot. Um, the paints reacted fairly nicely. The second time I went to use them, well, wow, it was like I had a whole different uh, set of paints here, and they were really difficult to use. I was having a lot of trouble with them. But tonight, it seems that I'm having a much easier time getting the colors out of those pans. And maybe Windsor and Newton, to keep the colors fresh when they package them, uh, maybe they put something on the, the paint like they do on uh, your brushes. They put the gum on your brushes so your bristles don't all come apart. I was thinking maybe, there we go, I'm sorry, I just had to, to get in there and paint that stem. We'll come back and do some more on those stems. I'm just dropping in a little bit of color. Maybe they put something on these to protect them uh, from the plastic so maybe they don't stick to the plastic that they came wrapped in or something. But boy, I was using them and I was like, man, this is terrible. What happened? They were so good before. I mean, look, the color came off so nicely on these the last time. And I went to use them uh, uh, in, in, for the other painting. And, and I, I was like, they're not even the same paint. What is going on? Uh, but tonight, it's, boy, it's coming out real nicely. So maybe they had just gotten too dry. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. Yes. If you haven't noticed, yes, I'm stalling. I'm just going to wave this around like this uh, to dry it off a little bit. It's been pretty dry here, so I, I fully expected that this would dry right up. Uh, maybe it's not going to, but uh, we're going to we're going to act as though it is. I think I can see a few spots that are that are drying already. There's some down here. It's pretty good. Um, what we need to do is we need to find one of these petals. Maybe I'll do this. I'll explain what I'm doing. That'll burn up a little bit more time and allow this to dry a little bit more. So we're going to paint this one petal at a time. And I'm going to use this painting as inspiration. And we don't have the greatest contrast in here, but I'm going to go darker down in the base of the, the petals, way down here on each, darker, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to let it just get really light towards the edges. And where we have these shadows, the curvature, the, the rippling of the, the petals in there, I'm just going to push down with this and flick up, push down on a paper and flick it. And I'm going to hope to get a few patterns like this. Now, on this one, it was a test, and I got a little crazy. Maybe there's too many on there. Maybe not. I mean, I think it looks kind of nice like that. But it doesn't, it's not quite as true uh, to, the, to this form as maybe it could be. But um, we're going to give that a shot. Okay, so we're drying up pretty nicely here. I have some new lights in the studio, and it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on with the colors. Um, and I should say, they are new lights, so I can see that there's a shadow here from this hand. I've got a big light right over my shoulder. Let's see, where? There. And I've got a light over my shoulder there. But I've also got lights there, there, and there to try and counteract that. So 
in the comments if you don't like these shadows that are on there right now if they're too much let me know i'll have to reposition those lights but uh <clears throat> we'll go with it for right now okay <clears throat> i'm gonna move down to a this is a number five brush and i'm just gonna strengthen my mix right here i'm just gonna get a number of these different colors the uh, Windsor Red, I'm going to kind of put up in the corner. There we go. The Alizarin Crimson, I think I'll put down in this corner. There we go. Permanent Rose, just move here. And Windsor Violet up here. And then we're going to take a mix of some and or all of these <clears throat> and I am going to start uh, let's see where can I start you know what I'm gonna start with this pedal out on the outside here let me see let's do this that might be a little bit better I'm just gonna drop that color in and it's it's pretty strong not super super strong but it's it's pretty strong right now and I want to have this a little bit soupy. I want to have a nice mixture of it and I should say while you're doing this you're actually defining the inside a contour of that petal. So I'm just gonna uh, I, I rinse my brush out maybe I didn't need to do that. Oh I'm gonna grab it I'm gonna pull out a little bit in a couple of places. Maybe I'm going to rinse my brush and we can pull back into it with a with an almost dry brush. Just just a little tiny bit. Spread that color around a little bit on there. And what we need to do as we're doing this is just think of the contour of that petal. Just look out there. If we if we get it all blue out there, blue. Whew, boy, I'm having a hard time. My first my first video back in a long time, and I'm having a trouble speaking here. All right, well, I, and now I don't remember what I was trying to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so there we go. <clears throat> I'm just making the inside a stronger color. And letting it come out to the outside. Maybe I'll put just a little bit on some of the outside edge here. But follow the contour of that petal as it's going out. You know, it's not. it doesn't come out straight. It comes out and folds over. Or at least it does in my world. Uh, in your world, and maybe it doesn't fold over quite as much. You can pull them straight up. It'd look just as nice. <clears throat> I'm going to do, do this one down here. And again, it's just put on an application of this color following the, the basic guideline that you've drawn out there. And now this one, I know, this one comes up fairly straight. I know, I told you, just follow the contour of the other one. And then I tell you, this one comes up pretty straight. But there it is. Something like that. If you don't like it exactly like that, you can come back and mix in a little different color in there. You might want to put a little bit of the the purple maybe down there change the color where you think it's a little bit darker and don't worry too much about the edge down here because we're going to put a little color down there for this leaf too so they, they kind of meet in, into a dark little place down there so don't worry about that too much let's see i'm just going to jump around to a couple of different petals here i'm going to i'm going to do this one here this is kind of a tricky one because it's a lot less in shadow right in the center there. And then the edges have a lot more shadow on it. It's going to go something like this. I'll just lighten this up for that. There we go. I think that, that's pretty good. You can make that as dark as you want to over there. And again, I don't have to worry quite so much about being precise here where the petals meet at the center of the flower because a lot of that's going to get covered up. 
All right, I'm getting ready. I'm going to do another one. Let's see. I think I'm going to do. I'm going to do the outside. I'm going to stay working on the outside out here. So we get a little bit more paint. I'm going to back out the camera just a little bit so you can see the paint. Shoo. There you go. I hope you can see the video too. Having a little trouble with my viewfinder. That looks good right there. All right, let's see what I can do. So <clears throat> whether I stay exactly on that line or just off of that line or not, doesn't doesn't really matter when you're doing this because you're defining the edge of that leaf. And wherever you put that line, that is now the edge of the, the inside petal. So here's where I might want to to get just a little bit of a different color, right? And I'm just going to go and I'm going to flick this out. Just, there we go. If you don't want to have, there we go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to change this just enough so I don't have, I painted it as one solid line and now I'm pulling it out and, I, and I'm trying to pull it out in such a way that I no longer have one solid line in there. So it looks like the leaf has got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something to it. And every now and again, you can start at the top and just pull back down. There we go. That looks good. I like that. You know what? I'm going to darken this inside just ever so slightly. And I'm doing that just with some almost solid color right from, right from the pan. There we go. Okay. Now let's see, now I'm kind of touching everything here. I'm going to jump up to the top up here. I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, I'm going to do a little bit more of an orangey. So I've run out of my colors up here. I'm remixing a little bit. But the cool thing about it is it doesn't matter what color I mix. However it turns out, that's the color of the flower. That's the part I love about this. <clears throat> so, all right, here we go. Here's the bottom of my petal. I'm just going to drop in some color down here. And I'm trying to, to look at my picture as a reference. And looks like a lot of this petal is kind of in shadow. So I don't want to pull that up. And again, I'm, I'm going to do it so that that line that I just painted across there is not straight anymore. There we go. Just, you just give it a little bit of curve there. You'll see when you do that. Whoa! You'll see when you do that. Give it just a little bit of curve instead of a straight line. That leaf will end up coming to life for you. Be a lot more, a lot more movement, a lot more energy to that leaf all of a sudden. And there we go. I put a little bit of that Windsor purple in there a little that's a mix of Windsor violet and permanent alizarin crimson <clears throat> and all of a sudden now it looks like the the bottom of that leaf is in a it's got a lot of shadow on it all right what do I want to do I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do this little one way out here on the top but I'm gonna drop down from my number five brush to a number what is this one this is a number a number two there we go. Same thing, <clears throat> but I'm doing this because I've got so much less property to work with here that I don't want my brush stroke to take up the, that whole remaining petal. There we go, just like that. Pull that up. Whichever way you think that petal is going to turn. Maybe a few fewer. Let's okay. There we go. Now I'm getting it. Am I in center? Can you see what I'm doing? There, there, there. Just get a little bit of that darker color. I want to make sure it's nice and dark. It's going to lighten up as it dries. As we all know, we've all been there. You paint something. You think it looks great. You wait five minutes, and you go, "Whoa, hold on a minute. It's." three shades lighter than I thought it was ever going to be. And then you got to go back and you got to, you got to darken it up again. And then you don't capture the moment just like you thought you were going to a minute ago because you spent all that time redoing something. 
So we're not going to do that. We don't want that. We just want this to be just right. Okay, I'm going to go to a different... What? Are, I was using a 5 before. I just picked up a 3. Well, I'll use a 3. And uh, I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to do inside in this one. This is a big leaf right here. And I'm going to, I'm going to use you know, a lot of this uh, permanent rose. And then I'm going to come back right in the bottom and put on some, uh, some of the purple. And this one, this one I should tell you, right, the center of this is what we're painting around right now. If you, if you didn't see that in the picture or didn't quite understand how I had drawn this, what we're painting around is the center of this poppy. And so we're going to come back over it with something that's pretty dark. So we don't necessarily have to um, get that line just perfect on it. There we go. Look. Oh, look. I give it that little flick there, and all of a sudden it looks like the petal just, just turns right there. And I'm going to mix in a little bit more of my purple down here underneath. Almost straight purple down here. There we go, and, and I'm going to do a little bit of purple over here to really set this off from the petal in front of it. It's not going to matter quite as much right around that the, the button or the center of this. Oh, let me, let's see, I'm going to put in a little bit more the red color in here. There we go. Oh, I like where it's going. I hope you guys like it too. Let me know. Because I want to I want to improve my video uh, quality as I do this. So let me know as you see this if there are some parts that are easier for you to see or a little bit harder for you to see that really helps me out. I don't always take everybody's advice. I'll be honest with you. I really don't. Uh, but I try to. I, th I, I hear what everybody says, and I try to incorporate that. It just, it doesn't, I don't, I don't always get around to doing everything everybody says. And uh, I don't know that I need to do everything everybody says, but, uh, but I, I like to hear what everybody has to say because you guys are the ones who are really viewing my videos. And uh, you guys are the ones who are telling me, really, if they're if they're good at, at all, if they're good at all, or uh, if they're if they're watchable, if you guys can can see what I'm trying to to accomplish. So it, it's very much appreciated, uh, and I and I love getting the feedback. I try to take a lot of it into account. There we go. Oh, I think that one looks good. I'm going to just need to darken that up down here a little bit. And this is where I said, so our colors down here are going to meet. And so when they dry, they're going to be a lot closer down here in that little dark area, that little dark valley. Down there, we could mix a little bit of, I don't know, maybe Prussian blue or indigo and put in there, but I don't I don't think we need to do that for this painting, but we could do that. Okay, I'm going to move over to this petal over here. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to do this on a left hand with my right hand. And I'm hoping it's going to... Yeah, I think I can do... I think I can do it well enough. There we go. That's not so bad. I thought it was going to be worse than that. So I'm going to pull up some of these. There we go. And it's amazing how as soon as you pull these up, now I, I know poppies, the, the, the petals, 
God, I really can't talk. To the petals are, they are more straight than I'm painting them here. I'm painting them with a nice big open curve like this. Um, that's why I say at the beginning and uh, I, I try to say throughout most of my paintings, I use these uh, images as a reference, not as a as a be all say all this is how it has to look you know I'm not trying to copy it exactly I'm just taking my inspiration from the picture nature gives us such great flowers to draw inspiration from I'm trying to to do justice to it in my own little way um, but I'm not trying to duplicate what nature has done Let's see, I got a little petal in way back here. I'm gonna, there, something like that. This one is more in the shadow, I think. I feel like it's more in the shadow. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a purpley feel way down there. There we go. Something like that. And let's see, where can I go to now? I'll come up and do one up here. I don't know why I feel like I should use a little bit more of the Windsor Red and make these a little bit more orangey up here. Uh, I guess I think that that's more in the light. It's not really, but it kind of feels like it. It's, it's higher in the painting. I don't know. I know that's just me. I know it's just me. There we go. This one looks like that one's a little flat. That's that's okay. There we go. Looks pretty good. Let me darken that up just. There we go. That oh, I think that looks good. I think that looks real good. This is coming along nicely. All right, I got a couple more to do. I got one here, one here, and I guess I've got two to do up here. Let me get these up going real quick. Can do this one. Let's see. This one will go. Again, I'm I'm defining that petal edge. If I want it to be smooth, I just paint a smooth line. If I want it to be jagged, I put a little bit of jaggedy lines in there. There we go. And this one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's looking good. And I, and that little, I, hate, I mean, it's so subtle. I don't know if you can see it uh, uh, on the video. I hope you can see it. That it's so subtle that just that little twist uh, when I pull this paint out, that little bit. The fact that it's not a straight line really, really adds a bit of life, a bit of movement to this. See, I think I need to, I think I need to add a little bit of water here. My paints, oh, you can't see. Oh, holy cow. All right, there we go. Just add a little bit. I want to, I want the, the difference between the lights and the darks to be improved. I'm trying to I'm trying to make the darks a little darker, the lights a little lighter as I paint. Sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this one right here and this is a hard one. I'm just gonna put in a little color and pull this out as I go. You know what? Quite honestly, sometimes that's just as good a way to do it as anything else. You kind of do get a you kind of get a really nice feel for it. You can you can get a really nice feel for doing it that way. There we go, and right nice and dark underneath there. Just a little couple, there we go. 
I like it, I like it, I like it. I like it a lot. I've got one pedal to do here. There's going to be a bit more orange. Let's see. Oh, I don't want to do this one. I'm going to do this one up this way. This is going to be an interesting one. Okay. So, that pedal, the way I've drawn this, the bottom of the pedal is down there, down here, and the top of the pedal is up there. I wasn't thinking about that when I drew that. Well, this got a little convoluted, that one, but I think that's going to be fine. I think it's going to be all right. Uh, I got one more to do here that's kind of the same way. That one, let's see, that one's going to come up this way also. Let me get a nice bit of, there we go. Oh, nice, nice. Good. Oh, I like that. Okay. So this one, of course, we don't have our center in. So it's a little different. Um, but these two we do. I must have touched that one. I'm not going to... I'm going to resist the urge to try to... Uh, all right. I'm not going to resist the urge to try and fix that. I'm going to try and fix that. Oh, and I got it. Okay. Uh, so that brings us to uh, our centers. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a bit of Prussian blue. I'm going to put that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, here we go. I'm going to put that up here. There's a little bit of Prussian blue, which is a very strong blue. And I'm going to do a little bit of indigo also. I'm going to put that down here, which is also a very strong blue. Now, I know that these are black. But black is such an odd color when you paint with it. Everybody knows it comes out really strong and it takes over everything. And I don't want it to take over everything. So I'm just going to change it a little bit, and I'm going to use Prussian blue and indigo, and I'm going to use my Prussian blue right here, that you can see I'm putting on right over the red that we had there before, and I'm going to use that as my base color. And then I'm going to come back to my indigo and everywhere I want to be a low light or a deeper value, I'm going to drop in my indigo. There we go. And that's going to spread around and, and give me my darkness. There we go. And I'm going to let that sit there. And I realize that I might get a little bit of a back run on that and I'm actually okay. You know what? I'm not, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to take who a little bit of my yellow ochre. Everybody uses yellow ochre for everything. I don't know why that is. Yellow ochre goes with everything and I'm going to, I'm going to just going to get a nice little mix and I'm going to just drop a little bit in here. Not, I mean, just, just one little bit of it. And I'm hoping against hope that that one little bit will add just a bit of interest in there for us. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing up here. Uh, what did I start with? I started with Prussian blue. Am I still on the screen? Maybe. I don't know. Here we go. Okay, so Prussian blue. And I've got to draw that in. There we go. And again, I'm defining as I go the edge of that petal that's in front of it. And I can still, at this point, that Prussian blue is such 
strong color. I can make that look any way I want. There we go. Oh, I like that. I like that. See, and that Prussian blue really pops off of there. It really makes that nice. Now I'm going to use my indigo. I'm just going to put a few drops of indigo right down here. Come on, indigo. Let's see, indigo is, I don't know these colors all this well, so I have to refer to my chart to which one I'm getting. There we go. Put that down there. And just like my other one, I'm going to put a dot of yellow ochre up here. And that's going to hopefully, ooh, look at that, help to fight off some of that, that darkness of that indigo. Give me a little bit of lightness on there. I'm going to continue with my brush. I'm going to mix up a little bit of, oh, I don't know, Viridian here. And come on, Viridian. I'm going to put that on here and just... I'm not trying to be super, super cautious about this, but I just want to drop a little bit of color. I'm using the Viridian because Viridian has a bit of blue in it. Now it can be a it can be a very strong color. And I don't necessarily want it to be that strong, so I'm not putting it everywhere. So it's gonna look more like at this point, it's gonna look more like a bit of shadow in there. All right, now I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. If I can find a bigger brush, here we go. This is a uh, number 11 round, and still in the Zen Art brushes. These are the Turner brushes, uh, half squirrel, half uh, synthetic. So they, they hold a ton of water, uh, uh, just an absolute ton of water. And I'm going to, I'm gonna do my background. I'm gonna do the usual Michael background. And a lot of people don't like it, but it does it it does add a lot of movement to the background without having to do a lot of work. And and what that is, whoa, I lost a hair. What that is, is just a mix of colors. And I'm gonna try to put these on, I should say, try to put these on a little bit lighter. I don't want um I don't want the colors of the background to be so bold that they overtake. So we've either got to we've either got to do this. We've either got to make our background so dark that these stand out as being lighter, or we've got to leave our background lighter so that our flowers stand out as being darker. I lost another hair. Well, uh, <laughs> I hope that that makes sense to everybody. And I'm going to be using shades of green. Now I'm mixing a bit of yellow in there, just because for me, uh, poppies are always out in the springtime. I live in California. Poppies come out in the springtime and in the early summer here. And uh, yellow to me connotes a springtime color, and I'm trying to get really close, right to the edge. I'm, I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to leave a, a white at the edge of these uh, petals. If you leave a little white, if a little white ends up being there, so be it. Um, it's not the end of the earth. We'll just go with it, and and I'm trying to do this fairly quickly, and so I am turning my painting. I, I, I realize that can make it hard to watch the video. I understand. I'm trying to limit doing it, but I do do it from time to time. Uh, so what else do I need to talk about while I'm doing this? I should say it does help if you're going around a stem like this one that you can mostly match the colors on each side of that stem. You don't have to be exact, but you want to be able to look from here across there and see, you know, a very similar shade. If, if you were to see, oh, I don't know, green, 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 and then blue on that side, you'd go, whoa, 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 
hold on, something crazy is going on there. And uh, so we don't want to, we don't want to mix too crazy a color and, and get those wrong. So here we are. I'm trying to do, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, I'm trying to do greens with a little bit of yellow mixed in uh, because green and red, and I yes, it's not red, red, it is a pink, red, but green and red are opposites, and so they will make each other stand out just that little bit more. So if I use that green, it's going to make these flowers pop off that page a little bit more. And uh, what else do I need to say? I should say the greens that I have going here uh, in my Windsor and Newton pan uh, are olive green here at the end, olive green, permanent sap green, and viridian. And the yellow that I'm using, oh, look at that. It's not even really yellow. I, If it were me left to my own devices with my uh, normal paints, the M. Graham paints that I normally work with, I would be using a Gamboge. In this case, it looks very similar to Gamboge, uh, but it is Windsor Orange, if you can believe that. And that's it. We are done. There are our poppies. Here is my inspiration photo. I've kept the basis of this flower and this flower and kind of this one here also and simplified, taking everything else out. Here's what I've ended up with. I think it looks great. I'm going to try to find something and sign this if I can. Let's see. There we go. That's all I've got for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed being here in the studio with me. I enjoyed being here with you. We'll see you again back in the studio real soon. Until then, thanks so much and bye-bye.